that. But the Bible teaches us that God will give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that he will make us trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Our goal in life is not to get our own way, it's to glorify God. That's what we want to do. Let me tell you something, eternity is a really long time. I cannot even get a conception of it. Forever, how long is forever? It is forever. <laughs> and the amount of time that we live here, even if you would live to be 100, is like one grain of sand on all the beaches in the world. So we need to really get busy serving God with our whole heart and wanting to live to glorify Him. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 teach us that we have the fruit of the Spirit on the inside of us. And one of those fruit is self-control. <laughs> it's not other control. It's self-control. And if you don't understand what that means, it means that God has given us an ability to control ourselves. So the first thing you have to do if you're going to break any addiction is stop saying, I can't control this. Come on now, don't look at me like that. <laughs> See, that becomes an excuse. Well, you know, I can't help it. This is just my problem. Just my bondage. I don't have any discipline. Yes, you do. I just can't control myself. Yes, you can. Maybe you haven't practiced it very much, but you could. The fruit of the Spirit is put in us in seed form. A seed of everything that God is comes into us the moment that we receive Christ. Think about that. A seed of everything that God is comes into us, into our spirit, the moment that we receive Christ. What does a seed need? Water. <laughs> what is the word called? The water of the word. <laughs> so the more we water that seed with the word of God, the more our mind is renewed, the more we begin to believe and the Bible says, be it unto you even as you believe. Once you fully, completely believe something, the devil might as well get out of the way. Because there's going to be some changes in your life. Now, first thing we have to do is believe what we have before we're going to see it manifest in our life. You get it inside, then it comes to the outside. This is all inside out. That's why it's very important to stop saying, I don't have any self-control. I cannot control myself. How many of you say that? How many of you are going to stop it? All right. And when I ask you to admit to something, I don't want one of these things. <laughs> if I said how many want a free book, you'd be, ah! <laughs> so if I say who has a problem with this? Now, Let's just look at these scriptures, Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes is love, joy, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance. That means that God's given us the ability to put up with stuff. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control. Everybody say, I have self-control. Self Discipline is another word that we can use for self-control. Discipline means to do what you know you should do when you don't feel like it and don't want to. Anytime that we're willing to do what's right and we depend on God, his grace is activated in our life, and he enables us to do it. When I say that we have self-control, that still doesn't mean you can do it by yourself. But it means you have the ability to do your part if you're willing. You don't ever want to try to do anything without saying, God, help me. I cannot do this without you. God, help me. I cannot do this without you. You don't even want to know how many times a day I say that. How many times have I done what I'm doing this morning? 
thousands and thousands and thousands. I started my day this morning with God, help me. I cannot go over there and do this without you. I need you. One of the reasons why we don't have victory in our life is because we hear somebody tell us, well, we should be this, that, or something else. And so we run home and try to do that and we leave God out of the loop. If there's anything that you hear me say today and you think, yes, I really need that in my life, then the first thing I want you to do is not go home and try. I want you to go home, study a little bit more yourself in this area, and start praying, God, I know that this is a change that needs to take place in my life, but I cannot do it without you. God is honored when we lean on him. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Discipline is what we have to make us do the things we should do in order to have the things that we want. <laughs> the distance between where we are and where we want to be is always filled with doing what we don't want to do. How many of you want to be out of debt? Well, then you got to stop spending money <laughs> that you can't spend. You got to stop buying things you don't need. Well, yeah. well, sister, I'm praying for a miracle. <laughs> God's given you one. It's called self-control. <laughs> if I want the freedom that Jesus promised me, then I need to set aside some time for him to study the word and get with him. Self-control automatically means that we are not to be controlled by other people. <laughs> now, people that are brokenhearted and wounded usually do one of two things. They either let everybody else control them because they have a lot of fear in their life, or they want to be the one in control and they become very obnoxious and nobody ends up liking them. We are to choose to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. This automatically means if I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit, that not all people will always approve of all of my choices. If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit and think that everybody's going to applaud for you and clap for you, you are wrong, wrong, wrong. Because the devil will use people to try to derail you from following the leadership of God in your life. Everybody wants us to do everything they're doing, but God is sometimes downright outrageous and he will lead you to do the exact opposite thing from what everybody else is doing. He'll lead you to do things that have never been done before and things that nobody is gonna understand. Amen? It's part of our healing, making that decision, I'm gonna be led by you, God. You see, the Holy Spirit is a counselor and he will counsel you right out of your problems all the way into freedom if you will follow him. But you have to remember that when you follow God, the devil is gonna provide somebody that's not gonna like it. And it's usually gonna be somebody that you care about and you really want them to think well of you. Now, come on, I want you to listen to me today, I'm trying to help you. When I was called to preach, which was a major part of my healing because I am a very, very responsible person. So when God gave me the responsibility of teaching the word, there's no way that I would do it and not give it my 100% best. So I study my head off. But the thing was, was that studying, being in the word all the time, was what brought healing to me. So I would use the word to bring healing and freedom in my life and then basically just put it out on a plate and let everybody else eat the same thing I was eating. I'm very convinced when I share with you that what I'm saying works. I'm not guessing. I'm not hoping so. I didn't get this out of a sermon book. I've tried it. And I'm here to tell you that I'm teaching you truth, and it's truth that will set you free. It's the Word of God applied in your life. We all need good, sound, solid doctrine, but we need more than that. We need life application. And so I studied very hard, and that studying was part of my own healing. But when God called me to teach, and I stepped out and started teaching just a little home Bible study, it's amazing how many people got mad. Here I was, just as innocent as I could be. 
I was just trying to do what I felt like God wanted me to do, and everybody got mad. I lost my friends. I got kicked out of my church, <laughs> ostracized by family, and I was shocked. So I'm just letting you know, don't be shocked. If you try to do what you think is right and everybody doesn't clap and applaud for you. And at that juncture is where many people turn back from what they believe really in their heart to be the will of God and they go with people. And they'll listen to me, they stay miserable. You have to understand that I would not be standing here healed today if I would have said, well, I don't wanna get kicked out of my church. Okay, I'll do what you're saying. Or if I would say, well, gosh, I, I don't want to lose my friends. I don't want to not be invited to parties and have everybody talking about me. Okay, I'll just do what you want me to. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about having some kind of rebellious attitude where you never listen to anybody. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not letting people control you. Well, there's only one way to truly recover from addictive behavior, and that is to know who we are in Christ and to believe that we have worth and value because Jesus died for us. Today, we're offering you teaching that's going to help you get this truth rooted in your life. Beauty for Ashes Action Plan. It includes CDs, DVDs, and a personal application workbook. It's going to be good for you to listen, to look, and to go through this workbook and do a little bit of writing things out yourself to make sure that you're getting it on the inside of you. Take a look at this. Escape the prison of your past with the Beauty for Ashes Action Plan. With over four hours of Joyce's teaching on CD and DVD, a personal application workbook and journal, the Beauty for Ashes Action Plan will help you change your perspective on the past and live a life as God intended, filled with joy and purpose. It's available today for your donation of $35 or more. Contact us right now, 1-800-727-9673. We were in Ethiopia and we were in a prison there one day. And of course, in the middle of nowhere. And, and um, we were just able to do a walk around in the prison and do a tour. And they had a library in there. And this was like when I really realized that partnering with Joyce was such a tremendous thing. They had a book from Joyce Meyer Ministries in that prison translated in their language that the prisoners could read. And we were in the middle of nowhere. And it was just like, wow, when I partner with Joyce, I'm going everywhere. I'm touching people. I'm doing things that I could never do on my own. But through partnering with the organization, it's worldwide. First, I think one of the most obvious features is the addition of a 75 terabyte processing component enables the end user to access our network layer protocol, thereby distributing the binary digits for the media player, which access the secure database of precisely one half Fortnite archival preemptive video playback. So that's pretty cool. That's right, a full week of enjoying everyday life episodes before they air on TV. Look for this and other great features at JoyceMeyer.org. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.